Hello and welcome to theCUBE's coverage here in New York City for AWS Summit in New York City. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. We had a full day of coverage here. We're getting all the stories, all the action here in New York City. Our next guest is Mona Chata, who's the Director of Worldwide Infrastructure Partners at AWS. Mona, great to see you. Good to see um, you too. 11 years at AWS, we've yeah. known each other for a lot of time. <laughs> Um, you're running all the partners around the ISVs, marketplace, partner network, that merge. Tell us what happened real quick and what, yeah. what the new reorg in your organization. Yeah, yeah, sure. So, you know, in my role, I have the you know, privilege of working with a variety of different ISVs, and specifically ISVs in what we call the infrastructure category. What that entails are ISVs or you know, partners uh, that are software providers mm. in areas like security, mm. networking, storage, database, data and analytics, AI, uh, Ops, uh, ML, DevOps, Cloud Ops, really, you know, if you think about all of the ISVs that really integrate with all of the AWS, you know, infrastructure core type of capabilities. Um, so those are the ISVs that, you know, my team works with. And so what we were finding is that AWS Marketplace is becoming this, you know, default almost route to market, right, for a lot of the partners that we have that are especially, you know, focused on uh, working with AWS customers. And so, what we decided was, well, we're working very closely with a partner organization, and we always have. In fact, <laughs> when I first started AWS, I was like one of the first security PDMs, partner development managers, and I always worked very closely with AWS Marketplace, which we right. also launched very much in parallel with the AWS partner organization. And so, it was always this like natural fit. Yeah. And so as we kind of went into 2022 thinking about, well how are we really going to figure, like how are we going to augment our, um, you know, our, uh, our support for all of our partners, we decided to merge AWS Marketplace with the APO because it not only extends to um, ISVs but also yeah. to consulting partners, um, system integrators, DISTs now, so everyone kind of <laughs> can DISTs, leverage. distributors. Distributors, <laughs> yeah, I love distributors. that term, DISTs. Yeah, yeah, distributors. Sounds clever, yeah. <laughs> you know, it sounds nice actually. <laughs> yeah, you know. you know, that can leverage the Marketplace and so now Marketplace is really embedded into all of the components within the AWS partner network and the organization in there. So it's just been such a great, um, yeah. it's been a great merger if you well and yeah. um, just a great uh, um, partnership across the board within our organizations yeah. and really the programs have um, also evolved to incorporate AWS Marketplace as a core element um, for the APN programs. You know, I've been following Amazon for a very long time as yeah. you know and it's, it's, you know, and when you grow so fast, yeah. you, you, Amazon always kind of looks at the data and says, hey, we got to get this right. Sounds like you looked at the data and said, hey, yep. we got, we got to put this together. It's That's all right. partner centric. Yep. One motion, one team. That's right. Easier for the partners. Yes. Is that what the whole objective it's, was? Exactly, it was making it easier for the partners because they're now, um, when they talk to a partner development manager, um, regardless of what the partner type is, they all have um, knowledge of yeah. AWS Marketplace as part of it. So it's, it's, everyone is all enabled on it, and so everyone's speaking the same language, so you don't have to go to all these different people to get um, information. You yeah. can really just focus on your, you know, your PDM has all of the knowledge there for you, right, across you, all the different you programs. You know, I, and I, I always love watching the Amazonians work because it's yeah. like, everything's day one, that's the kind of internal that's culture. Right, yeah. When it starts to look like day two, it's day one again, and I think the market we're in now is interesting because you guys grew up and you know you rode that SaaS wave yeah. um, of massive growth, okay? And now it's with the Gen AI shift, yes. it's a platform shift. You're seeing supercomputing capabilities in the hands of, of enterprises now that used to be dedicated to specific use cases. You're seeing new applications. Generative AI is generating new things. It's a new category. So yeah. again, it's days, almost day zero, yeah. day one. So you're back to day one. So at Amazon, how do you guys see that, yeah. that landscape? Because it almost looks like a complete redo of the previous generation of, it's hard to do this on your own, but if you use the cloud, Gen yeah. AI can be easier and faster. It almost seems parallel to the same story. So we're day one now, Gen AI. What are you seeing out there on the landscape? What do partners look like? Are they the same partners? Are they evolving? Because you have pre-existing partners and yeah. new partners coming yeah. in. You got new blood coming in. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll say this: that you know, while generative AI is you know quote unquote new, there's always been elements of it, and we've actually at Amazon have always incorporated elements of machine learning of AI into all of into our capabilities. Like for example, Amazon Go. So you know, we've always had this sort of notion of generative AI. It's just now taken to a next level. And I don't know that it's actually a new category. What we found is like across infrastructure, um, security, networking, storage, database, everyone is incorporating, data analytics, everyone's incorporating generative AI 
into their products, into their, whether it's a business mm -hmm. application, whether it's their sort of platform or their software or their data, their data platform or whatever it is, they're incorporating generative AI. And that is what's changing, mm -hmm. right? Is that component of it. And you know, I think one of the key things that's been resonating mm -hmm. with our partners is really our strategy around generative AI. Mm -hmm. And we think of it as these three pillars. You know, the first sort of foundational layer of like having your compute power. You, you know, when you're generating and you're creating and deploying these mm -hmm. LLMs, these large language models or mm -hmm. the, any of these foundational models, you need the compute power. And so having Trainium and Inferentia, if you want to train or inference them, you need mm -hmm. all that, you know, that compute. And so being able to offer that to customers mm -hmm. is, is key and critical. The other you know, component as we th think about that first layer of our strategy is also around SageMaker. Being able to build and then deploy those LMs is really critical. You know, and then as we think about the second layer, Bedrock. So you're going to hear a lot about Bedrock, <laughs> right? As you sort of you know, come into the, the summit and then just in general, yeah. and when we think about generative AI, Amazon Bedrock is really a key component to really helping customers embed LLMs into their applications. And so, you know, we don't think that one LLM mm -hmm. is going to rule the world, so we want our customers to have choice and flexibility, which is also great because that's mm -hmm. been the DNA and the mantra and a key tenant for AWS Marketplace, yeah. right? Yeah. When we first started, yeah. it's all about yeah. giving customers choice and flexibility, and that's really what Amazon, what um, Bedrock is about too. And then, you know, the final layer with, um, you know, having those applications, having those AI I assist with Amazon Q. Mm -hmm. uh, that is really critical, and what we've seen is, you know, I've seen with our, the, what's changing in the landscape is our partners are embedding all aspects of what yeah. I just talked about, all the yeah. three different layers of, you know, our components and our pillars of our Gen AI strategy into their, uh, incorporating into their Gen AI strategy. So, um, you know, we're seeing yeah. more and more um, ISVs or more and more partners get into the competency program, mm -hmm. the generative AI competency program. We're seeing more and more uh, integrate with Bedrock, Im integrate with Q, and then embed those into the applications. And the cool thing about it is these yeah. are not just <laughs> chatbots. These are not POCs. Yeah. Yeah. This is production. Yeah. And this is the cool thing about what um, you know, Amazon is delivering and what AWS is delivering is like, this is production workloads and our yeah. customers are using our capability for production, yeah. right? These aren't tests, these are productions. Yeah. So there's really there's cool. real use cases. I mean, I think, I think a year ago it was yeah. tire kicking, now we're seeing um, production, that's the, that's the benchmark and seeing yeah. more of that. Yeah. It's interesting, we're going to hear uh, from uh, Rohan about the yeah. company, so you brought that up, we're yeah. going to hear from that in another interview, but I want to get into your role as infrastructure partners because yeah. that's where you guys have like real, that's your wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. AWS's infrastructure, state of the art, from a chips to infrastructure, that's the bread and butter. Um, and the infrastructure is where all the action is right now. And if you look at generative AI use cases, um, all the infrastructure components, databases, compute, GPUs, XPUs, everything around the infrastructure is going to be retooled with generative AI. Yeah. It's just not to see characteristics change, storage networking uh, and computer all impacted. Yeah. How is that changing your partnerships uh, and your partners and how are they leveraging Gen AI? Can you give some examples of wh where the script is flipped, where it's tweaking, yeah. and how that's impacting some of those production workloads? Yeah, I mean what we found is, um, you know, we have a lot of partners, for example, in the security space, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we have CrowdStrike as an example, and so what they've done is they've created Charlotte AI and they've embedded that with um, Amazon Bedrock. And what that's done is it's really changed the lo uh, lo mm -hmm. landscape in terms of getting all of your data around surveillance and threat and all these attacks that are happening and then being able to be proactive, uh, not reactive, but proactive and then anticipate what's going to happen next. Mm -hmm. So then they're, they're giving their uh, end customers the ability to have like a 360 mm -hmm. degree view of what's to come. Mm -hmm. And so that's really helped to sort of change that landscape in security. I would say the other area is around data and analytics. Mm -hmm. We're seeing a lot of, um, uh, a lot of our partners uh, incorporate Q and incorporate um, Bedrock as well as um, integrate into SageMaker and start to build these models because they have all these vast amounts of data and trying to get it between structure and unstructured data, sifting through that, so really ensuring that the data quality is there, and then having that, incorporating that into an LLM is really important because that's where you know you're going to yeah. get the right type of um, the right type of data out, so that ultimately you can build that into the applications. The other cool thing that we're seeing is, you know, while um, you know, sort of like we started with uh, infrastructure, with like you know, like I said, security, networking, and GPUs, and all that. 
we actually are seeing that a lot of our um, end customers and a lot of our um, uh, our partners are also business application providers, right? Mm -hmm. So that big partnership that we have with Salesforce, um, you know, that is kind of what we're seeing is that's becoming more yeah. of a uh, more of a uh, of a those partners are actually coming to the marketplace. Yeah. They're partnering with us. They're leveraging yeah. our capabilities and also they're leveraging the infrastructure ISVs that we're working with yeah. into their applications. Yeah. And that's been kind of a cool thing to see <laughs> as well. It's like, it's like yeah. wow, this whole sort of um, ecosystem evolving, yeah. right? It's been great. Not to pat myself on the back, but I did predict with Chris Cruz years <laughs> yeah. ago that the marketplace would have a, a dynamic effect, not just on yeah. sell through, but and change procurement, but yeah. you're getting at something that's really key right now, which is integration. Yeah. And I think that was what we talked about years ago, but that's now the forefront. Um, you mentioned security. Yeah. Security used to be a bolt on. Yeah. Data protection, bolt on. AI ops, yeah. bolt on. Now, things need to be integrated. This becomes a big yeah. part. So, as you look at your partners, can you share your, th your, your thoughts from the marketplace perspective? Because if I'm a partner, yeah. I'm asking myself a few questions. One, I'm betting the, my, 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 my company on Gen AI, we're going to go all yeah. in, we're going to look at everything, we're going to reset everything, but I want a partner. Yeah. I'm going to partner with AWS, and, it, and my mindset is, if I'm going to build the bridge to the future yeah. and cross it, I'm going to do it with Amazon. Can they help me? Can yeah. you guys yeah. be that bridge to the future? What would you say to that partner? What's the, yeah. what's the, what's the uh, give me confidence that that's going to yeah, be a great yeah. partner. Well, one of the things is that um, our partners are, are go through, um, they have uh, alignment with the competencies. And so I mentioned the generative yeah. AI com uh, competency that we have and you go through rigorous testing. And so it's validation from um, AWS. It's validation because of all the testing that the partner has gone through from a series of, um, series of uh, the technical sort of approach and then as well as customers. So these aren't yeah. like, oh, just submit a you know, technical sort of evaluation yeah, review, and yeah, pass yeah. and you're done. Yeah. No, 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 this is rigorous that. And then in addition, you have to have production customers. So this isn't like test, these are actual vetted and customer So a tier one level, so tier one level, joint yes. engineering kind of joint thing. Joint engineering, and that's the same philosophy that we use with AWS Marketplace, mm -hmm. with the, uh, the partners that we have coming into the AWS Marketplace. We go through security checks, mm -hmm. we have a complete organization called Managed Catalog and Operations that vet those solutions and products, and so when you come into the Marketplace, and you also come into the APO, into the Solution Finder, um, when you're looking at all these um, partners that are in the catalog, whether it's you know through the APO or through AWS Marketplace, these are vetted. Uh, these mm -hmm. are vetted partners, and so their solutions have gone through testing with us. Plus, in addition, like we have um, solution architects that we've worked with that have also helped build right uh, some of these solutions. Oh, so that you have got so, so you got a tech team. The, you got a tech team. Yeah. So you got that covered. All right. The other side of the coin is okay. Yeah. Greed, money making. <laughs> partners like they want to. They're in yeah. business to make profit. So marketplace obviously has been a great benefit. What about on the on the best practices around? Yeah. How do you get me from zero to you know cruising altitude as a company? Yeah. I want to get there. I want to cross yeah. that bridge. I got to make money. I got to show proof. Yeah. yeah. Talk about the uh, the economic incentives. Can you share how the partners make money? What you guys yeah. offer? Is there like a best practice? What's, yeah. uh, what's that side of the business side? Show me that piece too. Yeah, yeah, no, that's great. Because um, one of the things that we did specifically this year is exactly what you just outlined, is we get this question all the time from partners, how can I be successful, <laughs> get going on Marketplace faster? Yeah. How, do, how do I do that? Because... Uh, is there a secret sauce? Yeah, like, know, there, what, is, what is that <laughs> recipe book? And so this, we're, what we've done is because we have like over 11 years of sharing, of understanding what makes an ISV or what makes a partner successful uh, through the Marketplace, we developed what we call characteristics of a successful seller or a successful ISV or any partner. And so what that really is, is almost like here's yeah. the sort of elements and the tenants that you need in order to build your book of business with through AWS Marketplace. And honestly, it's really, um, some of this, this is not rocket science. This is some very um, sort of, you know, when you when I say it, you'll say, oh, well, that's kind of basic stuff. But it's really important to have. It's a yeah. foundational element that you need in order to be successful. And that's things like, you know, having integration with AWS services. What we found is that the more integration that you have with our AWS services, whether it's generative AI, it's Bedrock, it's Q, it's SageMaker, it's 
it's um, you know integration with our you know core sor services like S3, EC2, EKS, Kubernetes, right? Our containerized services or any of our security type of services. What we found is that our AWS customers love it because and our field teams like it because once they're engaging with end customers, they're having these conversations and there's like, oh well, this customer has actually integrated to Bedrock. Well, hey. This makes sense. Let me pull this ISV into the conversation. This is exactly this, the the use case that it's um, a sales, the customer. It's a, a go-to-market. It's a go-to-market engine. It's like a, and so we found that that's been one of the core yeah. one of the core areas that's really helped um, has helped partners be successful is getting leveraging those integrations. And then this is where our field teams are like, oh wow, this is great because I can now you know have this conversation with an end customer because they are, are also integrated to this capability. Plus they're also using a they also need a security you know endpoint protection or they need a firewall, they need cybersecurity type of you know, threat surveillance type of So uh, you offer a, access to market that could be faster, yeah. seamless, to, seamless. For, the, for the partner because <laughs> their alternative is to go build their own direct sales force or indirect channel. Exactly. Versus pop into the marketplace, you guys facilitate and engage. Exactly, and I think the other thing that has been super you know, successful as well in terms of like one of the other key elements is you know, Really understanding that marketplace is part of your, uh, think about your entire sales cycle, mm -hmm. and then l let's outline where does that come in. What, mm -hmm. You know, people who aren't successful is if they're like, oh, I'm not going to change mm -hmm. my sales. I'm not going to change this workflow. Well, guess what? You know, procurement is being mm -hmm. modernized. Mm -hmm. You have to. Yeah. And so, what we've really worked with um, partners on is um, how do you, how do we embed marketplace into your, yeah. into that workflow in a seamless way. And so, for example, what has emerged out of mm -hmm. that are, you know, if you look at, especially in, in security and in, you know, um, data analytics and really anywhere in storage, as an example, consulting partners are a key component to that. Well, if you look at that workflow, initially we hadn't actually factored in how do consulting partners right. work with Marketplace, but then we started developing that and thinking, okay, they're a core part of how any of those partners go to market because those uh, consulting partners, you know, whether you know it's a Presidio, it's a WWT, it's an SHI, they're actually um, helping the end customer. They're consolidating yeah. purchases. They're adding, you know, value to that end customer. And so what we did was we integrated that with channel partner private offers. And so what it's done is it's really helped us also evolve the marketplace to a point where we're going to innovate with some of the, you know, I don't some of the existing workflows, but we're we're going to modernize them. And that's what we've done with the marketplace. So it's kind of been really fun. Yeah, it's a two-sided marketplace. You're bringing yeah. the GSIs and the partners more material to bring to the customer. That's right. So you're helping them on the front yeah. lines. You're giving access to the market, to the big customer yeah. that you have, um, to the yeah. partner, the ISV. All right, talk about the economics in terms of, because yeah. you know, what gets my attention with marketplace is that it's almost like, I won't say found money, but yeah. the people are buying bulk purchases through AWS. Yeah. They're pre-buying, so in part of the marketplace, if I understand this correctly, when I'm, if a big customer, a big whale, buys a bunch of Amazon, th that can be burned through the ISV can <laughs> participate in that. Yeah. That's where the action seems to be from when I talk to people out there right now. Yeah, I mean, like I think- Like get access to that dollar, so yeah. I can get that account. Yeah. It's, it, it's, yeah, I and mean, what you're referring to is basically the ability for an end customer to leverage third party software um, purchases through the marketplace to draw down on their sort of commitment spend. that they have, their AWS spend that they have. And, and yes, that is, a, that is definitely something that is um, attractive and it's an incentive for our buyers. But I think what's really been, um, you know, really important for our, our buyers that we see and that we get feedback on is all the buyer features that we've been developing um, to really ease procurement. Give an example. So as an example, we, um, we develop vendor insights. And so what vendor insights is, is a capability where, you know, today enterprises will have to ask a bunch of, um, you know, uh, like a bunch of um, ISVs, so you know, software providers, uh, consulting partners, information about their compliance. So do you have HIPAA, do you have SOC yeah. 1, 2, do you have yeah. all this stuff? Well what Vendor Insights does is it lets you, and, and you have to repeatedly ask for every single, you have to repeatedly ask for this information. And so what we're able to do is really take all of that data, take all that information, plus all of the AWS, type of compliance information, put that all in to the marketplace, so now you're able to upload that information, mm -hmm. and then what the ISV or any, you know, the, the software provider is able to, or data provider, is they can share that information with any customer. 
So they don't have to do it on an individual basis yeah. anymore. They and save so a lot of steps. Save a ton of steps. They um, save a ton of time. It actually de uh, it decreases the onboarding time for end, for, um, end customers so that when, who are onboarding ISV. So the, the whole experience is literally transformed. <laughs> and so that is really what's helping our buyers. And then mm -hmm. plus we have something called private marketplace where marketplace, when you come in, it can be very daunting because we have thousands, right? Thousands of listings there. But if I want to take, I can take a um, section or even like a, uh, you know, a curated view of the marketplace and only expose that to my stakeholders so they don't get overwhelmed. And so now you're talking about things like private marketplace that really let your developers run faster. And those are the type of features that actually our buyers are really excited about. And I think that's really fueling more of the, um, more of the interest and more yeah. of the like, hey, I want to get this because Marketplace is, some, is a place where all the automation mm -hmm. is happening and I need to start automating yeah. my procurement processes. So I think that more than anything yeah. else has really helped. Well, you guys have done a great job of enabling, taking Amazon yeah. Web Services is, a, is an enabling environment ultimately. It has created a lot of value and partners are taking advantage of that. Yeah. Um, here in New York City, just to kind of wrap up, yeah. how would you say, uh, the, the, um, this is going from an ISV standpoint. What's the big story yeah. here from your standpoint? What is the, in New York City this week, what's the big yeah. generative AI impact? What's the top story from yeah. your standpoint? Uh, I mean, it is all about generative AI. I don't think you can like <laughs> even talk like a second without mentioning generative AI. It really is. It's impacting the way that our customers um, operate. I mean, just even people operate, mm -hmm. right? So generative AI is the big story and you're going to hear about a lot of our, you're going to hear a lot about our services and how we're, um, uh, you know, the, the key features in some of our services, but I think the key thing that you're going to uh, hear about that I'm excited about are the end customers' adoption of generative AI, ser uh, gen our generative AI services, plus all of the, um, you know, ISV solutions, so software provider solutions and our partner solutions. So, you know, partners such as, you know, Deloitte, uh, there was that announcement mm -hmm. today of like Saw how that. we've extended our partnership with a strategic collaboration agreement and how we're de developing an innovation lab together specifically focused on generative AI. You're going to start to see more and more of that and how we're helping end customers take advantage of our generative AI capabilities and really bring them to life. I think what, we, what people aren't talking about enough of is the production, that these are real use yeah. cases, these are production ready um, you know, workloads for generative AI. Enough with the tests, enough with the chatbots. These are actually <laughs> yeah. real production. Real and applications. Real applications, and they're running in production on the AWS generative AI services. And you would agree that we're in early days right now, early days with generative AI. We're, I would say we're, we are early days with generative AI and it's only going to get better and it's mm -hmm. only going to get more, um, mm -hmm. I would say it's, we need partners and our partners are you know, a part of our solution so it's only going to get better and, and, um, and easier and more flexible for our end customers. You know Mona, whenever time uh, something happens, it's, I mean I won't say pivot because pivot means you stop but you guys yeah. definitely are not pivoting. We're not pivoting. You guys are growing and you're, you're uh, course correcting and, and higher trajectory with generative AI. As customers are watching and partners are watching, how would you um, show them the new Instagram picture of what the marketplace partner network, what's that new Instagram picture look like? Yeah. What is the, the new Amazon marketplace partner philosophy? Could you, how yeah. would you summarize that with the, if you say, here's the new picture, yeah. what would the new Instagram um, look like? I, I would say the biggest thing for, from a marketplace perspective and even just in, in general is really helping customers innovate faster. It's all about acceleration, it's all about that, and this is where generative AI is yeah. evolving, and this is where it's helping us <laughs> go faster, yeah. even more faster, yeah. right? And so I think it's all about acceleration. Yeah. Happy customers with money Happy flowing, customers, flowing gold coins flowing, <laughs> yeah. that's the picture. That's the picture. <laughs> Mona, great that's to see great. you, congratulations thank on you. your uh, 10, 10 year anniversary last year yeah, thank at you. Amazon, great, great, thank great you. to see you, thanks for coming on. All right, thank you so all right, much. I'm John Furrier here with theCUBE pop-up here in New York. We'll be back with more after this break.